Welcome. The Lost Boys. The original one. The original one. The first one. Yes. Yeah. Now, about a week ago, we heard that they're doing a remake, reboot, sequel. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know. They want to redo it. An, up, an update of some sort. Mm. And we weren't too impressed when we heard that. And judging by what I saw on Facebook over the weekend, many people are not impressed. Mm. Mm. Yeah, some of the, the cast, good cast, but they're a bit dweeby compared to the, mm. the characters in the original, mm. which was played by Kiefer mm. Sutherland and old Alex Winter, mm. who was Bill also and with Keanu Bill Reeves and, and Bill and Ted. Jason Patrick, one of the leads, and the two Corys, Corey mm. Heyman, Corey Chris Feldman. Feldman. Diane Vist was in there, you know, good, good actors in there. Yeah. And the old dude was a TV show, Mr. Merlin. Mr. Merlin on a Friday afternoon. I can't remember his name. Never missed it. I can't remember his name. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's the granddad. Mm. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's weird. I guess it's a case of nostalgia is a weird thing. Mm. It's stuff that you grew up with or yeah, that you saw at an impressionable age. 1987, so I was 13. I was 17, mm. my second last year of high school. You know, it was a, it was very hip for that time. It mm. was sort of these cool vampires. Yeah, it's like, like you said, it, it's like almost like one of the seminal movies where vampires are like really so cool. I mean, yeah. vampires are always cool. Yeah, you, you always root for the vampires. And I even rooted for the vampires in this film yeah. when I was a lighty. So you know, but yeah, so it's a case of we're nostalgic. We remember these things. So mm. if someone fucks with it, you kind of mm. you take it here, you take it personally. Mm. Because you remember it so well. I mean, I've seen it a few times mm. in my life, yeah, me um, too. but not the last ten years or so. No. But it is still very vivid. It's very, very um, memorable and on al all levels. And although it has aged, it, it mm. still stands. Yeah, that's why a re an update. I don't see the point. Mm -mm. And also, the the people that they've potentially casted for the for the leads are mm. not. Yes. And and not to no disrespect to those. Boys, they they're all in their own right, stunning actors, mm. um, and they d they did well in in the things that they've been in. I mean, but it, it's in a quiet place. Were good, and they fantastic. were good in it. But they're, but a bit they're dweeby. just not lost boys. They just, I mean, unless they, I don't know if they've, you know, nowadays our kids like, and a year later they're like adults. I so guess, I don't know. Maybe they're a yes. bit, maybe they're a bit more adult now. But <laughs> still, if if it's from. Quiet place and it, they yeah. a little bit dweeby. I just feel that uh, you, they're going to ruin the sentiment of the movie. Mm. Mm. I mean, it was, it's very much a sort of a cultural landmark in the vampire genre. Mm. Near Dark as well. Mm. Um, that was also, I think, around about that time. I can't remember the exact date. But the movies, when it, you know, it's always a case of Count Dracula. It's like this guy yeah. walking. These which is cool. These movies made vampires like cool and sexy. Yeah. Although Bella was sexy in his day. The sort of teen mm. vampire movies mm. really started in mm. the 80s, mm. I think. Mm. Like Once Bitten with Jim Carrey, it was like a silly slapstick kind Fright of comedy. Fright Night. Fright Night, these were all, and Vamp mm. with mm. Uh, Grace Jones. You know, those were like 85, 86, 87 ish. Yes. Um, and Lost Boys was in, in 1987. Yes. And you know, from there, just, you know, that's sort of laid the groundwork for stuff leading up to Twilight and Blade was obviously based on a comic book, mm. but that was also mm. Mm. a very cool take on the vampire mm. mythos and characters. Stephen Dorff was a gorgeous little vampire. <laughs> little vampire. <laughs> <laughs> He's very little. You can trip over him. They had some forgettable sequels for Lost Boys, which mm. I haven't seen any of them. No, me neither. At one stage, I didn't even know that they existed. They did is it The Tribe in 2008 and mm. The Thirst in 2010, which they shot here in South Africa. And Corey Feldman was actually involved. Mm. I think he sort of just pops up in the, the first sequel and then the third one they shot here. I think he's got a bigger role in that. And some of our local friends like Joe Vaz mm. had a role in that. Well, Joe's been in stuff from 10,000 BC to Dread, the Judge Dread movie, Starship Troopers sequel. And Joe always dies. Joe always dies. <laughs> Fuck it. We don't like that. <laughs> but, it, but old Joe dies well. Yeah, he does it well. <laughs> he dies well. 
The original Lost Boys was written by Janice Fisher and James Jeremias. Um, well, it's, it's from their story, and yes. Jeffrey Bohm wrote the screenplay. He did stuff like um, Inner Space. Oh, that was fantastic. A cool comedy where he uh, gets injected mm. into... Uh, was it Dennis Quaid? Dennis getting Quaid. Shrunk down and gets injected into old... Um, what's his name? <laughs> A comedian? Steve Martin's sidekick. Steve Martin's... Martin Short. Martin Short. Yeah. Mm. I've actually been watching a bunch of these Jiminy Glick interviews. Fuck. It is insane. <laughs> it's insane. Watch, watch his Jiminy Glick interviews. It's you cannot hilarious. understand how one yeah. person can put so many donuts in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but we digress. Yep. Uh, Jeffrey Baum also wrote the adaptation of Stephen King's Dead Zone, which... Oh, which was brilliant. David Cronenberg directed. Yes. So that was Fabulous. quite cool. And he did a Indiana Jones Last Crusade, I think. Wrote that, and he, he was called in to uncredited touch up the first lethal weapon. Oh. And then he wrote the second one, where the South Africans, racists, <laughs> go around making <laughs> cuck. <laughs> uh, and I think the third one as well. <laughs> no, I just you do the you do the the un, ungeplakt the accent so well. No. Yes. And uh, Richard Donner, who directed Lethal Weapon, he produced the original Lost Boys. And he also did the first Superman mm. with Christopher Reeve, another mm. one of your crushes from the old days. Mm. Um, and he did The Omen, of course. Oh, brilliant. And Scrooged. Goonies. Scrooged was also fantastic. He's done some cool movies. Yeah. But anyway, unfortunately he also died this year. Yeah. Um, sure. So yeah, so, mm. But Lost Boys was directed by Joel Schumacher, who also did Flatliners and the the Post and Burton Batman movies, yes. the more campy ones. Yes, the ones I enjoy. And with Val Kilmer. Mm. Yeah. Old Val. I still want to see that Val documentary. It hasn't mm. popped up on our Prime yet. It's supposed mm. to be on Prime, but mm. no, we're mm. in South Africa. So, mm. anyway. Um, so, what is The Lost Boys about? Well, I mean, these two guys come with their mom and they're relocating to Santa Carla. Santa Carla? I think it's Michael and Sam. Eh? Michael and Sam. And it's the older brother, and the, Corey Ham is the younger brother. And then they sort of hook up with um, some, they sort of check out the, the little do town. and It's like a little beach town. There's, yes. a, there's like a kind of there's a carnival, like a carnival boardwalk thing. type mm. thing. Very sort of nice, idyllic summer kind mm. of a vibe. And they're kind of not keen to move to this mm -mm. little town, but mm -mm. then they, they need to integrate there and meet yes. some people. And then they, they meet old Corey Feldman. Yeah, Corey Haim, he goes to a comic book shop and Corey Feldman yes. is there, one of the frog brothers who run the shop. But they're vampire killers. No! <laughs> and he, so he just like off the bat warns him about this yes. town, gives him this comic book to kind of give him a hint that yes. there's something wrong in this yes. town. It's got lots of vampires. Vampires. There's an actual vampire issue there, uh, which obviously they don't believe, but then mm. as we go along, um, and then there's obviously the the love interest. Yeah, Michael, the older brother, yes. he spots this good-looking girl, Jamie Gertz yes. character, um, but she's linked up with this other bunch on motorcycles, Kiefer Sutherland and his gang. Yes. Who happen to be vampires? Oh, and they are so cool. No spoiler alert. <laughs> That's you know, everyone knows they're the vampires in the movie. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was. It was just an, such a cool, different take on the vampire it theme. It was, it was. It also had an up, up, like, sort of modern music for that time. Yes. Um, they had, besides Echo and the Bunnymen's cover of The Doors, People Are Strange, which I think they should have used the original. Yeah. But, you know, um, what's that guy? What's that, um, the that saxophone muscle guy? guy the Tim, saxophone. Tim Capello? Yes. The, the oiled up muscle guy with the saxophone? Oh, he was brilliant. He plays the saxophone and he sings. I Still Believe or something is the song. You should check out our friends at Static Realms. Mm, they, they did an interview with him yes, recently. And, um, Much older, but he's still cool. He's still, like, doing his thing. Yeah. They use some In Excess songs in the soundtrack. Mm. Um, this other guy, um, Gerard McMahon. The Cry Little Sister song that was like sort of the big... That was the song. Like this child choir singing in yes. it. Marilyn Manson recently did a cover of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's got this all overall vibe. You know, the way it was shot, 
uh, it's just such a cool movie. Yes, and, and, and also I think the, the Corys had, they were such a dynamic little duo. Sorry, mm. it's like a very... No. Nah. But it's, it's the best description of yeah. them. They were great together. Um, license to drive. I actually never saw that. Fabulous. I mean, I'm sure that was very silly. It was silly. I mean, I'm sure if I see it now. Yeah. But the Corys were they were big in the 80s, mm. Um, mm. and especially the little. And they were co big cokeheads as well. <laughs> the the combination of the two Corys was powerful, and yeah. and, it, and they they were really did well. What together. is what is what is today's equivalent of that? I don't think you have a today's equivalent of it. The Corys were like the, the bad boys of the 80s that they were on all the teen magazine covers yeah. and they were big. Mm. So now the, the cast that they have in mind for this, there's nothing, it doesn't... There's no chemistry, it doesn't feel, or it doesn't seem like yes. there's going to be, it yes. might, there might be. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to... Yeah, we always, you can't jump the gun, maybe it's kick some movies, and the I don't wanna, ass. And I don't want to shoot anything in the foot, it's just that um, we are pr protective about... <laughs> and especially because you particularly like vampire movies yes and that one i was 17 when that came out mm, you were 13 13 so mm. chish that was a big hormone mm, time for you mm, mm. all these pretty all these pretty vampire boys so many pretty vampires then what the the one guy with the long hair one of kiefer's gang mm. I actually don't know what I don't know what his in. name was but I, I definitely had eyes for him and for old uh, kiefer as well and also, like, this movie came off the back of things like The Goonies, which was like, oh my word, that was huge. It was big. Mm. But that was teeny teen. This is Yeah, adult. yeah. But what I mean is like, it's that adult 80s. Teens. It's Old. that 80s. It's got that yeah. massive 80s sensibility. <laughs> and yes, of course, we are protective about but it. But not an, a dated 80s. No. It's also mm -hmm. like, like the clothes they wear, it's sort of... They were so way far out. Like trench coats yes, and that sort of thing. But it doesn't... I think there's some stonewashed jeans, but it's sort of you know, like ripped stuff and... Oh, that's all back The anyways. wardrobe, yeah. everything comes so. back. So yes, um, I really hope that... I, I'm sorry that they are rebooting it. It's, it's a tragedy. Mm. But I hope that, that a new generation will find something in it and that it won't just be a throwaway. <laughs> And maybe then they'll check out the original. Yes. Which probably won't happen, but I'm sure yeah. some people might do that. Yes. Or maybe watch the original before. Mm. That's what you must maybe do. First, track down the original, watch yes. it, and then you watch the remake, and then yes. you'll know. Yes. I mean, I saw the old blob before I saw the new blob. Mm. Kind of a deal. But it was a good remake. It was a brilliant yeah. remake. And I'm sure people of those days were like, why are they rebooting the blob, you know? Actually, last week, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, that was 63 years ago that the blob came mm. out with Steve McQueen. Mm. I mean, it was, it was tacky, cheesy, and low-budget B-movie style. But the one from, I think it was also about 87, 88, mm. the blob remake. Yes. That was like cutting edge practical effects and stuff it was, and it just it was just really some of it was there was some very groovy, good in, gory, in camera effects in that stuff, movie yeah. if i remember correctly was quite, which was fantastic yeah. yeah so and you know vampire movies they've now touched every corner everyone who can be you've had vampire kids you've had vampire teens have they added old vampires in an old age home but i guess they don't grow old they don't. Unless no. an old guy gets bitten. Does he get younger or does he stay old? No, no, he'll just stay old. <laughs> he'll never die. I think they should have... What would have been cool if if they did... Uh, if you talk about spin-offs, if they did uh, Francis Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, if they did a spin-off with the Tom Waits Renfield character. Yeah, but Renfield dies. No, man. They can make up something that actually didn't die. <laughs> I think that, it's for me personally, Ellen, I am, I love vampires, I adore them. Um, I just think that vampires should be left alone now for a while. I, I, I think it's saturated. After Twilight? The vampires are becoming pussies and... Also, the thing is, it's also, it's just now series. There's so many vampire-related yes. series that I've kind of lost track of. They've, they've tried to romanticize... True Blood was cool. It was cool. They've tried to romanticize the vampire again 
which is probably where it all started. I mean, the whole Bella Lugosi mm. was a very sort of vamp, uh, romanticized yeah, I mean, idea. Like a, a lost love, and just the, yeah. the, the Bram Stoker's one that... The, the, the actual story yeah. of Vlad Tepe. guy pining for his wife, spotting a woman that looks like his wife, yes. and then... It is a is love she supposed, story. Is she supposed to be reincarnation, or is she just... Uh, she, well, he... She just looks like I've her. traveled oceans of time to be with you again. So he feels that she yeah. is a reincarnation. And he's been sending his castle on his own for how many hundreds of mm. years? Uh, mm. So, <laughs> so any any chick he sees in a little locket, you go whoa! But, <laughs> <laughs> but I quite like. I, I wish that vampires would become. Um, I think that's what I enjoyed about um, the movie we did a review about um, not too long ago. Blood Red Sky. Blood Red Sky. I. It was fresh again. Uh, we, mm. we, 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 we went back to a vampire that is like almost feral. Yeah. Mm. Um, the Blade movies were cool. They were brilliant. brilliant. That was also, I mean, how that many was years the, ago? That was the right balance mm. for a vampire. Those vampires. They were, they were edgy enough, but they were still, there was still something old school about them. Udekir was in one of the yep, first one. First one. Um, but since then, I just feel that um, vampires, they're taking the, the life out of vampires. I would say zombie movies are far more spent than vampires. You can I don't still... even want to talk about zombies. <laughs> I'm so sick of zombies. Honest to God, I cannot, that's I why cannot I... stomach another zombie. You know, that's why if it's... If then you have stuff like Blumhouse taking something like Freaky Friday and turning it into Freaky with body swap, a school kid and a serial killer. That's, that's that like was, a fun... That was brilliant. That's a fun, a fun different take on something that's, that's been done a, to death in the 70s and in, 80s. And then now it, it's, it's fresh. Mm. It's fresh. So there's always something that will come up. Or now, like we've just recently watched The, the Night House, it's basically a kind of a ghost story. Mm. Mm. But it's very well done that mm. it's... It's cool. It still boils down to very much right. similar things, mm. but the way it's handled, the way it's written, yeah. the way it's acted yeah. and shot. So vampires, you can still, something mm. will still pop up. Yeah, I just wish that they would think carefully before they tackle the vampire because I like the, um, we had a movie at the South African Horror Fest once called Strigoi. Mm. And it was a very low budget film, but it was still very well made for, they used, obviously mm. they, they, they capitalized on everything they rural had. Rural setting in Romania. Very rural Romanian setting, which is obviously the genesis of the whole mm. um, vampire lore. And that was unbelievably well done. And that story, it, it's not a romanticized vampire. And I even think that um, we now have one of our shorts. One of the shorts for, for the 2021. Yes. It's also called Strigoi, Strigoi. And it boils down to the same, same thing. Same thing. If, if someone dies, you know, if they're a vampire, you need to yes. stake the heart and burn it. And I, love, I love the idea of going back to sort of the genesis mm. rather than... Oh, twilight, I glitter in the sunlight. I don't catch fire, I yeah. glitter. I am the purifier. You um, forgot about um, Interview with the Vampire. Interview with the Vampire was, was well made. I, I never could stay awake through it though. I never read the book. You probably might have enjoyed the book more. I fell asleep the moment Antonio Bandera showed his face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Antonio. <laughs> and it's not that I don't... I like mm. Antonio Banderas. Mm. I think he's a very good actor. But it was like at that Grand Guignol kind of mm. place. Eh? And and also, it's just, I, it took me a couple of times to, to get past that, to stay awake through that. The blame, same, the blame, same blame with, it on Antonio. The same with Sleepy Hollow. I, I, fell, as, I mm. fell asleep in the movie house uh, when we watched it. I fell asleep watch, trying to watch it on TV. I fell asleep watching it on a DVD. I've never seen that movie in mm -hmm. full. I don't, I have no idea why. Oh, we'll have to maybe revisit that then. Yeah, because Christopher Walken is the headless horseman guy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, my word. With his okay. sharp teeth. Oh, man. Oh, he's classic. 
and I might be able to stay awake for Christmas. It's a Tim Burton movie, and he was. Oh yes, yeah, so Johnny Depp's in it. Yeah, and yes. he was uh, Max Shrek in the second Batman, Batman Returns, wasn't it? Like Max Shrek, the vampire yeah. Max Shrek. The, the okay. actor who played Nosferatu. <laughs> okay. He gave him his he gave yes. him the name for the Batman oh, okay. character in Batman okay. Returns. Oh, interesting, interesting. With the oh. penguin and all. Yes, that. yes. The good old. When Batman. when Danny DeVito played the penguin. Yeah. Okay, well, yes. if we're talking about good old Batmans, we're not going to jump back to Adam West Batman's no, TV no, no, show. No, 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 no. We're going to. But the Tim Burton <laughs> Batmans, the 80s yes. ones. But you see now. The old 1950s, 60s Batman people probably thought like, yeah. why are they ruining Batman this way? I don't know. <laughs> Zap, pow, ding, dong. All I'm saying is, is that yes, we, we, we are upset that they are remaking Lost Boys, but mm. I guess it has been happening since yeah, the beginning of movies. And but it reaches a stage where filmmaking, you know, back then they were sort of you could, couldn't do the kind of special effects mm, in those old mm, Batman TV mm, shows. Mm. Besides the fact they didn't have budget, they didn't have the means and the capability means. to mm. do it. So, in that sense, yeah, but you don't need any... If you can have digital effects in a remake or a reboot of Lost Boys, it's going to go, oh, <gasps> yeah, it's, it's CGI. It's, it's going to be so bad. Because you know, you have, a, you have like a, a helicopter shot of them flying. Yes. You have practical effects. And I remember their lair being mm. like so so cool and they were actually like hanging upside down hanging upside like down. proper bats yeah and I that's like details like that was just so fantastic mm. um, yeah I, I can only wish them well with 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 making them I don't know if the movie's been made but we would advise you to watch the original yes watch the original we're probably gonna have to score it before everyone leaves yes have you guys left already thanks for staying <laughs> The original oh, Last Boy is sure. Okay, I'm gonna score first this time. Mm. I will give it an eight. I also wanted to give it an okay. eight. Okay. Because in case you were gonna say eight and we say, oh, he's copying her again. No, no, no. I actually wanted to give it an eight because, yeah. but I think, I think more for sentimental reasons. It's no, but it is. Brilliantly made movie. It is good, except for Corey Haim is like a bit of a, a little annoying brat sometimes. No, like but when he's sitting in the bath, you got a man singing with his yeah, but you see, foam this, on his this head. This is the thing about the, the it's like chorus. silly 80 bits. Us, Generation X, we get the chorus. Yes. And I think the new generation might not understand the chorus at all. Yeah. I think so. one of the last movies that uh, Corey Haim, before he died, I think that was one of the Crank movies. Those are crazy freaking manic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, just, it's sad. Uh, mm. Corey um, Haim died under tragic circumstances and yeah. it's very, very sad. And Corey Feldman also was a molested child. Yeah, no, there's um, a long story about him still wanting so to So very tragic. Reveal, or he did reveal he some did. of these He's actually people. opened up a bit, mm. and uh, but scared, scared to open up. Mm. And and um, yeah, and I, like, I love Corey Feldman. I think he's brilliant. I've always enjoyed him. No, even mm. in those bad meatballs part four type sequels. No, he's fabulous. Mm. That's cool. Mm. Uh, his music is debatable, but hey, he can do what he likes. Exactly. He's Corey. He's, He's a Corey. Corey. He's a Corey. He's Corey. And he was in Friday the 13th, the final chapter, That's the fourth right. one. He was a little lighty. Yes, he was. And still... in Gremlins. Yes. So he's been in some classic yeah, horror movies. He's a, he's a brilliant actor. Mm. Very fond of him. And he's Corey. And he's Corey. <laughs> okay, now we're waffling now. Yeah, we always waffle. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, share it, and uh, yes. go check out our merch store. Support us, support independent cinema, support cinema. Support our Horror Fest film festival. Yes. We do this because this is stuff that we, when we were younger, people didn't bother to create something like a horror festival. That's why we created mm. it. Obviously now stuff like YouTube, you've got five million people doing horror reviews, but maybe you see a bit something a little different in the way we do it so we'll keep doing it as long as you want us to do it so we'll we'll see how it goes yes more to come cheers catch you later